Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. I want to thank the organizers for having me speak. It's a real privilege. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about WooCommerce, and I'm, I'm gearing it towards sort of beginning, start out. You know, maybe you haven't used WooCommerce, maybe you're thinking of using it. Any, uh, as a show of hands, uh, is anybody using WooCommerce currently? Okay, a lot of people. So, so a lot of what I'll be talking about you probably know already. Um, maybe there'll be a few new things that I'm hoping that you know will come into play. Maybe things you think about. So. Let's get started. Um, I'm the creative director of Bela Design, and I have my own business for 15 years now. And we do a lot of custom uh, WooCommerce work, themes, uh, development, plugins, um, a lot of styling with, you know, for WooCommerce sites. So we've run into a lot of issues and problems and challenges, and and so hopefully this this is a little. Uh, composition or, or, or way to get you through some of these issues, you know, when you run into WooCommerce problems and, and how to get started on the right foot. So with that in mind, what's a boot camp? I, when I was thinking of the talk, I thought of, you know, get somebody up and running. Boot camp, people usually go to fitness boot camps to get in shape, right? They, they have before and after pictures or, or you have a military sergeant yelling at you. I'm not going to be yelling today at you. But the idea is to get you ready for for battle probably, mostly on, on the military side, but I want to get your store ready for selling and you know, making yourself productive and, and setting up your WooCommerce store the right way. So one of the biggest decisions you're going to make first off is choosing a theme. I'm going to step you through 10 main areas of setting up WooCommerce, and there's obviously a lot more, but we don't have all the time to do everything. So I'm going to, I'm going to get you through the main parts of your setup. So choosing the right theme, and I'm going to talk about premium themes for a moment. Uh, Woo Storefront is a newer theme from Woo Themes. Uh, it's, it's very lightweight. Uh, they also have Woo Canvas, which is their flagship, which is heavier. Uh, Woo Storefront is designed to be very light. It's, uh, it's not bloated. It's, it's designed to be fast versus Canvas is their flagship. So there's, there's more code, there's more features, there's more functionality. So if you're thinking of getting something up and quick, you can use Woo Storefront. It also works with the uh, visual you know, editor inside the themes in, in your appearances menu. So that's a really popular one. The other one we've been playing with is Beaver Builder. Has anyone used Beaver Builder before? OK, a couple hands. So this is a great theme. Um, we started using it the last couple months, and it's been very successful uh, with some pro products and projects we've been working on. One is a uh, car company I'll show you later, Liquid Glow. They make car care products. And we, we, we sort of did this as a hybrid approach, but it, it has a drag and drop page builder. It's a plugin and a theme. So there's a page builder and a theme. So it is WooCommerce compatible. What you want to look out for is a theme that works with WooCommerce. Because if you don't, then you're going to have to spend time styling uh, with the CSS and creating styles for the pages. So that's something to consider if you want to get up and running. So basic setup, when you first install WooCommerce, they put in a little uh, help or quick setup guide. And I'm just going to flash through these quickly. But this is, this is like the core or basic setup. It doesn't go through the whole setup, but it kind of gets you off on the right foot and touches on some main areas. So I'll just jump through these. So the first thing your WooCommerce plugin is going to do after you install it and you activate it, you're going to get a page setup. And this is just something that makes all the pages you need for WooCommerce to run. Um, you want to use this setup, just hit continue because if you don't, you're going to have to manually set those pages or create those pages so WooCommerce knows you know, where the shop page is, where the cart page is, check out. Next, you're going to look at the store locale. So, and whether you're in pounds or inches or metric, Woo, Woo Themes is an international company, so the default is usually metric. So this is where you want to set your, you know, your, your units and your dollars. And um, next, you want to look at shipping and taxes. I'm going to be talking a little bit more about this, but this is just a really, really basic setting. Uh, I guess the main main point is here that you're going to enter prices exclusive of tax and taxes added you know, at the very end once all the items are in a cart. Um, let's get the next one. So payments, payment gateway, Woo Themes, Woo Commerce uh, comes with 
PayPal built in. You don't, you know, that's an offsite checkout, so you could just put that in quickly. We're going to talk more about the payment gateways in a minute. Um, and then this is the end of your little quick start, and there's some good resources there. Okay, so let's dive a little bit deeper. Once you get these first set up, so let's talk about products. That's probably the first thing you're going to think about in your store, right? We have to get some products in. And this is a, a clothing uh, dress shirt manufacturer that, that has products. And we're, we'll look at the simple products first. Uh, simple products are going to be single prices. So you know, just one price. You could set your regular price, your, your sale price. And then if you look on the, the tab on the left side here, you're going to get like your general inventory. This is where you're going to be setting up your inventory if, if you're going to be tracking inventory. So by default, uh, that's turned off if you want to start tracking inventory for every item. Uh, shipping, um, how you know basic shipping here, linked products, attributes, and advanced. So you're going to click through these tabs. I'm not going to go through all of these, but I just want to show you basic product setup. And then I want to also show you a variable product. So variable products are typically for uh, clothing companies. You can think of shirts, and you can think of different fits and neck sizes and sleeve lengths and you know all the variables for a dress shirt. So what you have to do first is set up all of your attributes. And you can set these up separately. So set up all your attributes, name them, and then you're going to click on the, the checkbox that says Use for Variations. And once you have your attributes set up, um, once you have it in the variable product, you, you want to select all to load those attributes. Or you can select uh, individual attributes if a shirt is only coming in certain sizes or certain fits or colors. You can, you can do it on a product by product basis. That's the red box I'm showing that the select all. The other thing is once you have all your attributes set up, you want to create all the variations. So your attributes are the you know, descriptive elements of the product and the variations of all the combinations you have. So there's a great tool uh, or a button to click on called Link All Variations. When you click that, it takes all of your attributes, all, all of those in the previous screen, and you're going to end up with all the different variations for that shirt. That's probably the fastest way you can do it. You can do this manually, but having this button to link all variations really makes it fast. OK, next we're going to talk about the checkout. Obviously, we want to make sure our checkout is working. So the first thing you want to look at with WooCommerce and checkout is whether you're going to have an on-site checkout or an off-site checkout. So on-site, does anybody know the difference, on-site versus off-site? Anybody, go ahead. Okay. Yes. Uh, PayPal. PayPal. PayPal, so off-site, right, yeah. So it takes you to the PayPal site. So the big difference is you're, as soon as you hit you know, pay, WooCommerce is going to take all that product information, all the order information, and bundle it up and send it to PayPal so you can pay in PayPal. So you've left your site. So on-site checkouts are much more successful because they keep the customer on your site. You know, studies have shown that when you send somebody somewhere else, they get lost. They get freaked out, like, oh, I don't want to log in. I don't want to use PayPal. I don't want to log in. <laughs> Whatever the excuse is, you want to keep them on your site. So that's preferred. And if you're looking at an on-site checkout, uh, we're going to talk about different payment gateways. Uh, and having a f SSL certificate, a secure certificate, helps uh, with the security, but also creates uh, a certification on your site so that you have complete security uh, you know, from your browser point for the person visiting and you know, doing the transaction. And not only that, but it's, it's a peace of mind. So some browsers, if you don't have SSL security, uh, will actually give you an, an error warning. Um, even though the payment method might be secure, there are other ways to do uh, checkout without SSL. But some browsers aren't aware of that. Some customers aren't aware of that. Um, so let's talk about the gate gateways, popular gateways. Um, Authorize.net, probably the biggest one. And when you're choosing a gateway, I, you know some of the factors you want to look at are ease of setup, time to setup. Um, you know, percentages, how much percent is, is the gateway going to take? Is it going to be 2%? Is it going to be 3%? How much is the transaction fee? 
so that's a numbers game. That's a volume game. You're going to have to kind of shop around and see what's a good fit for your company. If you have a smaller um, volume, you might want to look at Stripe. It's, it's a faster setup. Authorize.net is going to take longer because you have to get a merchant account associated with it. So it's a longer setup time. It could take up to two to three weeks. But by the time you put in your application, you know, go for the merchant account, get it all approved, get it all set up. But they do offer the lowest fees or lower fees than many of the others. So they might offer a fee of like 2% versus Stripe and PayPal is up near 3%. Um, Stripe is very friendly for developers. It has a great user interface. Um, and also want to point out that Authorize doesn't just have one payment method. They have multiple. Uh, they have Authorize CIM is their high-end high sort of solution that will save uh, the credit card. In the, it won't save it in the shopping cart or your account, um, but it will tokenize that, um, that user and the account with their servers. It also does recurring billing. Uh, Stripe does recurring billing, and PayPal has m multiple options as well. There's PayPal Advance, which is a great uh, solution. It's I think it's $25 a month, and it's an on-site checkout. Uh, it's cheaper than PayPal Pro, and that's available for US and Canadian uh, store owners. Uh, Braintree is actually owned by PayPal, and they offer an incredible deal. If anything you take away from this talk, um, check out Braintree because they have a deal where you get the first $50,000, no fees. So that's, you know, if you're looking at PayPal, that's $3,000 in fees that you're going to be saving. So Braintree offers that as, as a way to promote their services. So definitely a great way to integrate. And, and all these integrations, you're going to have to get a plugin, a WooCommerce plugin that works with WooCommerce and integrates with WooCommerce. So you're going to be setting up an API, and that's just an, a connection from your hosting server to their hosting server. So you get that secure connection. Um, and each of them has different setups. So you just have to pick you know, one that works for you on a business level, and then start working on integrating. OK, so I want to talk a little bit about shipping. If you're, you know, if you're doing downloadable products, you can, you can do virtual products. And you can either have them download. There's a couple methods. You can use WooCommerce for the download. You can use Amazon's uh, you know, resources for their, you know, you, you can set up a separate Amazon account for, for larger files. I've done that with clients where they have large uh, video files or audio files. Um, it makes it a lot faster. And for physical products, you want to set up your, your shipping. So probably the, the most common way is to do a flat rate. You know, But people lose money on flat rate. What if somebody orders 1,000 products and you have to ship it for $8? So if you're thinking of not losing money and want to be more accurate in your shipping costs, I definitely recommend setting up a UPS account, USPS. Uh, FedEx, whatever you, you want. You can do multiple shipping options. And you can also dial this in to only show the cheapest rates or certain rates. Uh, but basically, all these accounts are free. So you know, obviously, the most popular are USPS, FedEx, UPS. They're all free accounts. You just sign up. And then you're also going to integrate with their API. Um, what's important about any of these shipping methods is that you're going to have to use um, height, weight, uh, I'm sorry, height, width, and length, so all three dimensions. Sometimes people don't know all those of their products, but you have to fudge it or make it up or figure something out, and then also the weight. So every single product needs its unique uh, dimensions and weight for these methods to work. Uh, lastly, I just want to touch on ShipStation. ShipStation is free, the plugin itself, um, but the service is paid. And ShipStation is a powerful tool that your shipping department can use to ship out the products and create invoices and um, packing slips and you know everything for the shipping and actually print the labels right from ShipStation. So that's a consolidator. It'll work with all these other services. And then you know, you're going to be shipping out of ShipStation as one sort of central hub. The other thing to look at when you're setting up uh, your shipping is your box sizes. So this is something you might not think through, but if you think about it, if somebody's ordering multiple items on your site, you want to be able to pack those boxes or, or items into a larger box, right? And then when there's too many to pack in that 
first size box, you got to get to the medium size and then the large size. So what WooCommerce does for you, it, it lets you define the box sizes um, and also the maximum weight. So it's going to ask you for the inner dimension and the outer dimension and what's the maximum weight that you can put in that box. So it's going to be adding up all the products in the cart, you know, basing it, looking at the box sizes and then figuring out which shipping method to use or what, what box size and what weight is going to be used for that delivery. Um, and if it has to split it into multiple boxes also. So it's really smart that way, but you have to set it up and, and give, enable this option. Okay, taxes. <laughs> this is the really, really fun stuff, right? So we just had a, uh, a WooCommerce meetup and uh, we talked about taxes for part of it. So taxes is ironically one of the most kind of glossed over <laughs> areas I've found with clients and it's, it's very important because there's a lot of different tax jurisdictions. Um, there's, it's by zip code in California alone. It's, there's all different tax rates based on your zip code. So I'm going to give you a couple options on how to set this up. You need to be responsible for collecting your taxes from your, you know, people buying from your store and also submitting that money to the state and you know that's just part of doing business so you can do a flat tax rate sometimes people will do that and you know I don't recommend that because a lot of times they'll charge the highest tax rate nine percent in, in LA but there's other parts of the, the state that it's lower tax and they should be getting taxed at that rate so one way is to import a CSV and this this is an example of the California uh, sales tax it's showing, you can see this low from as low as 3% and it's going to go up from there. So this import, uh, it's down on this lower right here where it says import CSV. You can get CSV files online. Um, they, they may not be formatted for Woo ta WooCommerce taxes, so you might have to play with the formatting. But keep in mind when you do this, this is a fixed tax rate. So this is one point in time, you know, that the taxes, the rates were set and tax rates are adjusted you know, year to year. So it's going to be up to you to keep this up to date. Another option is WooTax. Um, this is a free plugin. It's, it's, it works really well. I've used it with a, a project, a client site, and it's uh, good support. I, you, know, you never know when you get something for free if there's going to be any support with it, but their support was really good. Uh, and they integrate with something called TaxCloud. So TaxCloud is a service that is free if you want to have your taxes go all to multiple states. It's a little confusing, but it's free. I want to show you the states. So all these blue states, it will collect taxes at the same time automatically for all the states. But for most of us, we only want to collect tax for one state that we're operating out of. Unless you have business in these other states, then you could use this free option. But most people are going to have to pay $10 a month, which isn't that bad because this is a dynamic uh, you know, tax cloud. It's, it's, they're always updating their tables and their, their rates and everything like that. So $120 a year, you can have um, a cloud-based tax solution. The other one I would say is like another level up is, is Avalara. And they offer tax integration with almost 500 different e-commerce solutions, I think. Um, and they, they have a plugin that was made for WooCommerce, and it works well. It's, it's also integrated with paying your taxes, so they have a reporting. They have all this online reporting and also submitting your taxes to the state. So this is, this is a, a good enterprise level solution. Okay, next, next we're going to look at setting up your emails. And that seems pretty obvious, but you need to set up your emails. And you can see in the WooCommerce integration, this is the general, um, the, all the settings, the, the tabs you can see at the top. Um, so emails, this is for when you get a new order, uh, when your customer gets an order, uh, you know, when, they're, when you're processing the order, you know, do you want to update your customer on that when, if they've been refunded? Uh, when it's shipped, so you can set all this up, set your emails, and you can also stylize your invoice. So you can add your header image, you can add some color to your invoicing so it looks like it's coming from the store. It's not just the default colors. So this is where you want to set this all up. So last thing, it, it, you have pretty much all the pieces in place, and now you're ready to test your checkout. 
And this seems kind of obvious, but a lot of people, they're afraid to f do the final test. So test, test, test. You have to use that credit card. Uh, if you're working for clients, you know, ask them for a refund. Or what I'll do sometimes, I'll set a, an item to 50 cents. That's the smallest amount you can run a, a, tr a credit card transaction. Um, so you know, definitely there's nothing like actually testing once everything's said and done. And testing when it's live, not just on the development server. The other thing you want to do is ask your grandmother to test. Mm -hmm. Why not? Just, just ask somebody that is not involved with your project. You know, maybe they're not savvy with a computer. See if they can get through it because a lot of times I'll, I'll have clients say, you know, we, we tested and we couldn't get through and so we have to figure out what's not working. And that's really important. So get people who are not involved and see if they can get through and it's a good experience for them. The next thing you're going to do is start checking your orders. So, you know, once your orders start coming in, you're going to have to check your orders, fulfill your orders, and give status updates to your clients. Okay, I want to talk about the user experience. We, we sort of talked about the nuts and bolts of getting everything, I call it the plumbing. You know, once, once you get the plumbing in, everything's working, everything's flowing. Now you want to work on, you know, maybe refining your site. And this can be done at the beginning phase of a project or after. I'm, I'm kind of bringing this after because I wanted to get the nuts and bolts working. Now I want to look at how is a, how is the user experience. And what I mean by user experience, I mean where are we f letting people focus, or where do we want, you know, the visitors to look and focus? Um, how do we want to display the products? Are we focused on selling product, or is it, you know, a lot of information about the company? You know, all these conversations. So I found that sometimes clients have sites that are, you know, they sold in the pa or they haven't sold in the past, and now they want to start selling, and their site is sort of a mixture of the two sites: a, a previously non WooCommerce site, now it's a WooCommerce site. This site was developed 100% for sales. I just want to point out some of the design features I, I think that work really well. One is having this upper nav bar on the upper right side where you, know, you might want to think about upper nav where you have your account information, your cart, uh, you know, your help information, you know, anything that's secondary that they can easily get to log in and help them with their purchase or using the site. And then the, the main navigation is mainly focused on the store. You know, the first nav button is shop. So it's obvious that's, that's the focus for this store. Here's another one where we're putting our products first. You know, you have thumbnails, you have a grid, um, you have also on the left side you have categories so it's easy to navigate and you know people could click on those categories. You can set up these pages in WooCommerce based on category so when you, when you go to a certain page you can have that WooCommerce category display and publish all the items for that category. This is another one. This is using the Woo um, Superstore theme and I'm just showing this because it has filters in the sidebar. <coughs> That's become more and more popular, you know, sorting with filters. And this is a, a Woo theme that, that handles the, the store really well. If you don't have a large budget and you want to get a premium theme that's geared towards e Woo commerce and e-commerce, this is a great one to use. The other thing I want to talk about is having great product photos. This seems obvious, but many times we get product photography that just doesn't look good. And that's 90% of what sells your product. It's a large part of it. So this is just a simple setup. I think this person set this up for you know, this little photo booth for like $10 using a certain kind of translucent paper and, and a tripod. And it doesn't mean you have to spend a lot of money on product photography. You can do it yourself. I recommend hiring a professional photographer. Um, especially when you're tr shooting tr uh, products that are difficult like, like beverages or you know, glass or things with reflection. It makes a big difference if you can you know, work with somebody who has experience with that. The other area I want to point out is working with the Woo widgets. So WooCommerce, when you install WooCommerce, it, it installs a host of widgets which you can drag and drop into your sidebar of WordPress and, and your store pages. So you can do this specific to your store. And it's just going to give you, you know, one is a shopping cart. It shows what's in your shopping cart. There's price filters, there's navigation, there's product search. So it's a lot of good widgets to kind of use here and, and, and play with. So I want to 
we're uh, starting to wrap it up, but I wanted to talk about useful plugins. And there are so many plugins with WooCommerce now. Um, it's a little overwhelming. Uh, we do our best to vet those out, but not always, you know, not, it's not always the case that you get a plugin that works with other plugins. So I would say one suggestion is to make sure that whatever plugin you use, it's well supported, um, it's well, you know, documented that they're doing update releases regularly. Um, Woo Themes makes a point to support their plugins, and, and I kind of lean towards that. Some other companies like Ignite Woo, um, there's, there's a lot of different companies also sell plugins. So I'd say the first one you want to look at installing is your Woo Themes helper. Um, that's, that's one you can get out of the Woo Themes account. When you download uh, WooCommerce, I think it asks you to set up an account. It's free. Um, and the Woo Themes helper, if you ever get any plugins and you get a license code, this is where you enter your license code. And that's important because you want to get those updates. One of the biggest challenges with WooCommerce is, is updating it constantly. They're always updating it, and there's plugin updates that are running all the time. So it's one of the most critical applications to update. I've seen issues with checkout and all a host of issues if you're not updating the plugins. And the best place to look for those issues in your settings, uh, there's a status, system status in WooCommerce itself, which will give you a red flag if there's any plugins that are out of date. Uh, the newsletter subscription, that's great for adding, uh, you know, people who are checking out on your site, you can add them to your MailChimp list. Uh, print invoice packing list lets you customize and print uh, an invoice packing list. Smart coupons lets you do bulk coupons. It works with the coupons. It's built into WooCommerce, but it lets you mass generate coupons and codes and everything like that. Caching is important. So W3 Total Cache plays with uh, WooCommerce well. You can use look at that one. Also dynamic pricing it has a wholesale pricing. And also multiples, if somebody's you know, buying multiples of a product and you want to have the price go down, you can work with that. WP All Import is a great way to manage your inventory if you want to import your inventory through CSV. Uh, the shirt company Twillery that I showed you before, they use that heavily you know, to manage imp and import new shirts that come in and, and orders that we've even set up orders. So there's all kinds of ways you can import products into WooCommerce. Uh, shipment tracking is a very simple plugin. It, it's, it basically gives you a little box in the order detail that you can paste your, uh, the tracking number for a, a customer and, and then they'll get an email. Um, wholesale pricing, that's Ignite Woo. They have the Wholesale Pricing Plus and that lets you go by uh, a product by product basis, set up wholesale pricing. So somebody can log in as a wholesale user and then the whole store, they'll see all the wholesale pricing just for that user if they're logged in. Uh, Yoast SEO is, is a premium uh, that works with WooCommerce. Um, just finishing up here, I want to say uh, welcome all of you to our meetup group. Uh, we have a meetup group that we started this past year, I think uh, a year or so ago, and we're meeting next uh, November 5th at WeWork in Hollywood. So we'll be there, and then also I'm the founder of the Topanga WordPress meetup group, so if you want to stop by and visit us there, have a hike in the canyon, come to the library, and uh, <laughs> enjoy Topanga. Uh, and I think that's it, and it's contact information. I want to thank everybody, and if you have some questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thanks. Thank you. Is, okay, so the question is, is there is a plugin or add-on for cart abandonment? Yes, I, there are a few. So if, I, off the top of my head, we haven't integrated those, but just do a search on that. I believe there's a few that you can check on. <laughs> yeah, for WooCommerce specific, you'd want to look at. So any, anytime you're looking for an idea for a plugin, just type in WooCommerce plugin, and then the idea you have, and you'll get it. You'll get something. Any other questions? Yes. I'm using WooCommerce right now for a digital download, or I'm about to, I should say. Yeah. My question is, you had mentioned Amazon as a place to host the, is that right. better than having it on the main host? Yeah. So the question is, you're going to do a de download, digital download, and should I host off of Amazon instead of the host? So how large are your file sizes? Uh, between 30 and 100 and something. 
Okay, so 30 to 100 megs. That's borderline. You know, it's you could probably get away with the self-hosted version. Um, but yeah, using we were dealing with video files that are 600 megs, 800. So using the self-hosted took a long, definitely took a lot longer than using the Amazon. I think it's an A3 integration, and it's very inexpensive. It took some time to set up. It took some testing, and and there's a plugin for that for WooCommerce that you have to buy. So just as a side note, the plugins with Woo Themes and most plugin companies nowadays are. They're, they're on a yearly basis, so you're paying for upgrades for, for the year. So um, it used to be lifetime, but they changed that to yearly. So that's something you have to consider. Plugins can range from $49 to $99 to more. And you start adding up. Yes? Now, I have a client that um, would like a, to do an integrated registration form for when people buy uh, courses. A yeah. So they want to know a little bit more about the people that are buying the product, like you know, your name, your right. market. What's the best way to integrate? Okay, good question. So the question is, if, if somebody's doing a registration process and they have an integrated registration form, what's the best way? I, we have, a, we have a, a client that does a lot of educational-based programs, and they, yeah, so they, they're using Gravity Forms, and we've customized that to give them a PDF, and they can actually sign and register. So you can make a dig, you know, digitally binding contract uh, with the signature. Gravity Forms is an amazing plugin, so you can, there's a plugin that integrates Gravity Forms with WooCommerce, so you get those two running side by side. You set up your Gravity Form just as you would, and then you integrate it with WooCommerce as a product, and that becomes part of your product product description and part of the checkout, really. Um, so that that's a powerful way to do that. So would they, would someone sign up for the courses? Right. They would fill out the. It would be part of the. It basically would be like their address, their you know all the questionnaire, the form information. So you can make that. You could put in custom fields for as many questions as you want to ask, that will override you know, the checkout. Basically, add that to the checkout, and then when they hit pay, then they're gonna. It's gonna take all the information. It's gonna send a gravity form to you, and then it's gonna take them to the checkout as well. So. It works really, really well. It works on product level and also on checkout. So, what's the plugin called? Gravity Forms. No, but the, is there a special plugin that integrates it? WooCommerce for Gravity. WooCommerce. Gravity Forms for WooCommerce. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, there's there's some other ones that that will do custom checkouts, but I think I would look at Gravity Forms. It works well. Any other questions? Yes. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, you can still do it for the 50 cents, but if you don't want to keep having to yeah. credit cards and reimburse. So, you're, yeah, so the question is if you have fit people checking your checkout for fake credit cards to, for fraud. Well, for, no, for testing purposes. Like, you can go to authorize.net. Oh, for testing, and okay. Authorize.net or like PayPal should have credit card numbers that are fake numbers that you put in to try. Right. That's true. You can. They do, yeah, yeah. You can use. I still like to use a real credit card because I want to make sure it's getting to the purse, you know, the bank and the payment gateway. And right. but yeah, that's that's a good point. If you go you with. Have to do a lot of testing. You don't want to have to do the fifty cents. Right. That's true. Yeah. So the point is to check with the merchant gateway for test numbers. They they might be able to supply those test numbers to you for that gateway, and they're unique for that gateway. So you can. And there's also the sandbox mode. So you don't have to go live into production. You can you can do a sandbox test, and it won't capture. It won't authorize the charge. So you can do that. Um, did you have a question? Can you offer payment plans? Okay, good question. The question is, can you offer payment plans or recurring? Yes, on um, both. There, there are plugins for that. Um, plugin. Yeah, there's, it's a plugin. Usually when you have some unique functionality that's not standard with WooCommerce, it's going to be some plugin that extends it. So with the payment plan, you can set up, I know there's a plugin for that, and you can set up various payments, and you can also set up recurring. Now, when you get a recurring billing, you have to get a special gateway for that, so keep that in mind that it has to support that recurring billing. Do we have a question over here? Yes. Talk about uh, taxes and how much of a payment is <laughs> Have you used tax jar? Have you tried I haven't used tax jar, but I just heard about that recently. 
So that's another one to check out. Not bad, you know, but it is a service. Okay, how much do they charge, do you know? I think it was eight, I think it's up to ten. Okay. That's right, run tax cloud. Okay. Okay. And I was just on the Roy outside for Blue Commerce, and I think it just developed a new uh, tax plan of their own. Oh, okay. Yeah, Roy's here from Woo Themes. He's a plugin developer and, and support person. He's over by the Happiness Bar, I think. Yep. So if you want to talk to Roy, he's a great person to talk to about anything related to Woo Themes. And also, there's a, just want to say there's a Woo conference coming up in March. Uh, they had one last year in San Francisco, which is great. It was people flew in from all over the world. So this Woo Commerce is really blowing up and, and taking off. And they're going to plan another one. For, I think it's going to be March in Austin, Texas, maybe. Are they trying to tell you the South by? Or? No, I don't, I don't think so. I, I think they're, yes, sir. Uh, do you know anything about the, uh, I mean, you know, obviously, uh, you told me at the meetup that they were acquired by, uh, by Automat. Right. Is it going to be integrated into the, the base code, or how's that? We, yeah. I, no, I think it's, I don't know a whole lot, and they're not really saying a lot, but I think it's, it's, it's all, you know, all the, the team from WooCommerce is still intact. Um, they're, they're still independent. They're, they're all working on side by side. Um, so yeah, let's, let's ask Roy after this event. And at the, at the after party, maybe we'll, he can give us some information. So yeah, so Woo, Automatic was bought WooCommerce, for those of you who don't know. Automatic is you know, Matt Mullenweg's company. And so that's, that's exciting news. I think it's going to help the development for WooCommerce and support. Is that one over here? Have you used the multi-site WooCommerce? Have I used multi-site? Not. No, I have not. It's, it is tricky. I've had clients who want to do their own like super stores. Some, the, the, trick, the tricky part is that not many plugins work with multi-site. So when you get into supporting that, it's, it's going to be a little difficult. Um, so yeah, I would, I would maybe find somebody who specializes in that. I just want to mention that Woo Bookings is a really interesting thing yeah. that Woo develops itself. And, and Bookings is such a difficult area for, for scheduling. So right. Got a schedule. So yeah, she mentioned Woo Bookings. That's a great plugin. I used that for a, a, a client that did healing work and, and wanted to schedule their clients. And, and, and it actually, it works so that the client can see the schedule. They can put in a request for a booking. And, the, and it's up to the practitioner to approve it. And then once that approval is, is accepted, or that, that, that time and date for the, for the treatment, then a, an email goes back to the person who did the request, and then they can pay for the, the, uh, the session ahead of time. Can I ask so, the name of the site? Uh, yes, it's Adi Shakti. I'll, I'll send you the name, A-D-I-S-H-A-K-T-E-E dot -E -E com. It's actually important because yeah. they, they have a showcase, but it's not broken out, so there's, there's no showcase for the bookings. Right. Really yeah, it's a nice one. Did you have one? No. Are you kidding? <laughs> Where did you misspell your Oh, I did misspell it. Thank you. <laughs> That's embarrassing. <laughs> I'll fix that right now. <laughs> yeah, add an E in there. Spell check. Thank you. Is there any more questions over here? I have experience creating a store within a store, like allowing uh, people to sell. Their own yeah, that's what he was talking about with maybe like a multi-site. So it's it's I haven't done super store sites like that. There are some challenges with that because of uh, multi-site and plugins not working with multi-site. So any other last ones? Okay, here. Oh, for mul for a site with multiple languages, yeah. in one, yeah. That's I have to be honest. I haven't done a lot of international um, WooCommerce sites. We have done, you know, just translated sites. So I think you're gonna have to, you know, there's gonna be plugins to support the product definitions and descriptions, and you have to break out those those translations. So okay. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Have a great work here.